Hey everybody, it's me, Tara and Eileen, and welcome back to our Nancy Drew Let's Play of Treasure in a Royal Tower. Last episode, we did a lot of reading in the library just to make sure that we didn't have any clues in there that we needed. We also found out that Dexter is related to old Mr. Wickford who owned this castle. Um, one thing that we need to do this episode, hopefully, is get out into the garden. I don't know what is out there or anything, but Mr. Wickford said something about um, a statue of some sort and something being there. Um, also, we really need to talk to the other characters because all we talk to is Dexter, like literally. So let's get into this load. Okay. So I know we just barely talked to him. him. I can never remember his name. Um, it's a French name. It's locked. Okay. Weird. So let's head up the stairs then. So, like, we haven't even been able to talk to Professor Hodgkiss at all. And then that other girl was only there once. I don't know why she, like, totally disappeared. Oh my gosh, she's there! <laughs> so what'd you find in the library? How do you know I was in the library? Oh, come on, Nancy. You've been on the prowl. I can tell by the sparkle in your eye. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. Aw, you're no fun. So tell me more about the life of a photojournalist. It must be very glamorous at times. Well, there's nothing glamorous about the pay, I can tell you that much. What do you know about Jacques Brunet? Didn't you watch the last Winter Olympics? He's France's big cheese of skiing. He holds the record for the 500 meter slalom but he totally choked at the games. I guess he's washed up now, but at least his looks haven't gone down the tubes. <laughs> Did you know Professor Hodgkiss published a book on Marie Antoinette? Yeah, I looked her up on the internet. The critics panned the book. Looks like other historians think she's a real quack. There was a little mix up with the lockers and I accidentally opened yours. Yeah, and? Well, I was kind of confused. Who should I, I have I was pulled just trying that? to see whose stuff was in there, and I found a bunch of IDs in your bag. They all had your picture and other people's names on them. A savvy photojournalist always carries a couple of alternate identities, Nancy. When you're working under deadline, you don't always have time to play by the rules. I'm sure you know what I mean. Does your job take you to exotic, far-off places? Well, there is a lot of travel. Too bad I'm so useless with foreign languages. When you researched this place, did you find any references to a secret garden? Huh. Not that I remember. But I probably wasn't even thinking about gardens. I mean, it's hardly croquet weather. Okay, if you caught that, she just barely said, I am terrible with foreign languages. Yet, we found a letter in her bag in Spanish. So she's lying. I'm dying to find a way into that tower. Where do they usually hide the secret entrances in weird old Midwestern mansions? <laughs> I guess I should know, shouldn't I? Too bad most of the places I've covered aren't any weirder than imitation butter. I wish you'd hurry up and find it, though, so we can check it out. I'll let you get back to your magazine. Keep me posted. Okay. Oh. Okay, right now it's 11.15, I'm pretty sure, in the morning. So hopefully that she's Can there I help around 11.15. Okay. See ya, Mr. Egan. Alrighty then. Okay. Um, I just remembered that there was this tower room that we found, and we've only ever been there once. Oh, but she's here. 
Should we talk to her? Maybe. I swear she was one of those rooms, but apparently not. Right here is the tower room. Um, and there's a picture of Marie Antoinette. I just want to make sure that we didn't miss anything in here because it seems like there's like nothing really in here. Hmm. And then also there's this hallway right there. I want to go in there, please. Oh yeah, let's see if we can get her talking. Yeah, where the heck is she? She is in one of these rooms. Is that you, Brandy? Oh, I'm glad you're here. At the moment, my theory is rising like a magnificent souffle. I need to collect a few more ingredients, if you will, but it's a delicate situation. If I leave my room even for a moment, I fear the souffle will come crashing down in a heap. What do you need me for, Professor? What I need is some information about the castle. Hard numbers. I've come to the conclusion oh. that you are an enterprising and faithful soul. Therefore, I have decided to entrust you with this important mission. Who knows? If you succeed, I might whisk you away from the hotel business to be my personal research assistant. Well, Professor Hodgkiss, I'm not actually in the hotel business, but I'd love to help. Marvelous! Here's what I need to know. What is the model number on the elevator? I'll be very eager to hear what you come up with. But please, don't disturb me unless you have the answer. The model number on the elevator. Should be easy enough. Unless it's like broken again. It's locked. Why? It's locked. Mm, I think it's broken again. So let's go and reset it. At least this old castle has stairs. <laughs> it's just kind of annoying that we have to go all the way over here to reset the elevator. Okay. The model number on the elevator. Five zero six. Five zero nine six four. over here, right? Yes! Did you find the information I asked you for? Sure did. Good, but I need you to write it down so I don't forget.
thank you. Let me do some calculations to see if this is correct. Eureka! If there's one thing I like in a young person, it's ingenuity. Now, I've got work to do. Time to stir the cauldron and stoke the fire. But if you'd like to talk, I'll be holding office hours in the lobby between 3 and 6 a.m. There Meet we go. Then. Okay, let's go and do that because we really, really need to talk to her. Like, she's the only one that we barely ever talked to. Like, we've done a ton of um, things for her, but never really have gotten to, like, sit down and actually talk to her. So between 3 and 6 a.m. There she is. Nancy, dear, welcome to the witching hour. Isn't it marvelous to be up and about when others are sound asleep? I find my brain waves are at their most powerful during this time. Yes, I happen to do some of my best work in the middle of the night, too. So tell me, Professor, what is this theory you're working on? Well, you probably know by now that I'm a scholar of French history. <laughs> my specialty is Marie Antoinette. Oh. Poor Marie, the most misunderstood queen of the 18th century. Marie used to visit the very tower that now belongs to this castle. I'm convinced that this place holds evidence that will forever change the way the world views Marie. But the walls have ears, so I'd rather not say any more right now. If you're really interested, why don't you go up to my room and have a look around yourself? You've been such a great help to me, almost like an apprentice. <laughs> oh. I've always wanted an apprentice. Wow, Professor, that's really generous of you. I'd love to learn more about your work, but are you sure you don't mind? I insist! Your mind is like a ravenous monkey gobbling up every banana in its path. Oh, how can I stand in the way? Here's my extra pass key. I get back to work at 6 a.m. sharp, so just make sure you vacate the premises by 5.59 and put things back where you find them. It's all scientifically organized in there. What did you mean when you said Marie Antoinette was misunderstood? Everyone thought Marie did nothing but spend France's money on jewels and fancy soap for herself while her people were starving. History books have upheld the myth that she was just a spoiled and heartless brat, but I don't believe it. Why not? I believe that she's been the victim of vicious rumors and lazy historians for too long, and that if the real story could be told, people would realize that Marie Antoinette was actually a good woman who wanted to help her people, but didn't know how. Do you know anything about a tiara that was given to Marie Antoinette? The infamous tiara, of course! Oh, people thought Marie had this extravagant piece commissioned for herself, and they hated her for it. But really, it was her husband, King Louis XVI, who had it made for her birthday. Oh, she didn't want it, refused to wear it, and then, a few months before the revolution broke out, the tiara disappeared. What do you mean it disappeared? It was never found. There were rumors that she had it destroyed, but no one has ever been able to prove this. See you soon. Goodbye. That is awesome. So, like, as I've said, I've played these games before. This one I have not played in a really long time. Um, I don't remember ever going... I didn't think we could go into her room, personally. So I think that is cool. No, that's my room. Uh, this way. Here we go. I'm 
excited to see how this looks. I don't remember this at all. Cool. Okay. Born November 2nd, a Scorpio like me. What a coincidence. No wonder she was so passionate. Austrian birth name, Maria Antonia, married off at 15, and she had to change her name, too. She must have been frightened. Her favorite color was purple, like me. I wonder if she adored chicken drumsticks. Despite the elaborate hairstyles that were the fashion of the day, Marie preferred to wear her hair loose, unpowdered, and natural. Note evidence that she was unpretentious. There is no concrete evidence that she was the one who coldly declared, let them eat cake in response to news that her people were starving. Marie was immature, but not cruel. Um, there's her boots. Testing. Can anyone hear me? Hot kiss to Earth. Come in, Earth. Oh, okay. I think I think we're rolling. <clears throat> now let's get a look at these hallways. So rich in detail. You'd never know this place was built in 1920. It's all so 18th C. Ah, oh, and there's Marie. I feel so close to her, just being here. It's as if her spirit is in the air, sweet as the smell of fried chicken. <gasps> I wonder what shocked her. Something's missing here. Dearest B, marvelous to receive the news of your progress. I'm sure you are on to something important with the medallion and the stained glass window, but I think the significance of the medallion must go beyond the message you've seen. I've looked through the family letters and it seems that when Marie Antoinette gave her niece Helga the first, my great, 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 uh, great, great aunt, the medallion, she told Helga to keep it safe as it was part of a great truth that she hoped would someday help heal the wounds of all of France. Helga urged her to explain this great truth, but this was all that Marie could divulge. The truth can seem hard and ugly at first, but eventually its hardness comes, becomes a thing of eternal, of eternal beauty. B, you must find out the meaning of this. Keep up the good work. Old friend, I know you'll be successful. Hmm. Is there nothing else? Ah. Is that why this cut off? Okay. Let's go forward a day so that can charge and then we can watch the rest of that video.
Oh, oh, what's this? It appears to be some kind of peephole. But what, pray, does it peep upon? Shall I peep? La la, I do believe I'll peep. <gasps> the beauty, the colors. So this is what Helga told me to look for. Where's my medallion? <gasps> it fits! Note to self, high five Team Hotchkiss! And what's this? A message? Eureka! It says the diamond! This does not have very good battery power, does it? So we'll put that there, but let's go look at the people. say that. Hmm. Those noises again. Let's see if it's charged enough. I just want see like how long we have to charge it for. Testing. Can anyone hear me? Hotch kiss to Earth. Come in, Earth. Oh, okay. I think I think we're rolling. Can I not skip <clears throat> this? Now, let's get a look at these hallways. So rich in detail. You'd never know this place was built in 1920. It's all so 18th C. Oh, and there's Marie. I feel so close to her, just being here. It's as if her spirit is in the air, sweet as the smell of fried chicken. <gasps> Yeah, I think that's it. Um, I wonder what this is all about. Okay, maybe we can go talk to her about this medallion. She should be down here still. Hello, my fellow night owl. Or perhaps I should say hoot hoot. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, did you find anything of interest in my room? I did pop in there, though interesting doesn't begin to describe the place. Would you mind if I went back another time? Of course not. Pop in all you like, just not when I'm working. Mm. See you soon. Goodbye. Well, that's all I really know to do right now. <laughs> um, so we're going to end it here. Next episode, I'll probably give Bess and George a call, see what we need to do. Um, I'm just a little bit stuck at the moment. Um, but this episode, we are finally able to talk to Professor Hotchkiss and the other girl a little bit more. And we are also ex able to explore Professor Hotchkiss's room. And she has a medallion of some sorts. I don't know where she's keeping it or anything. But hopefully we can get a hold of that soon so that we can fit it in the peephole just like she did and figure out what that means. But I hope you guys have a great week. Have courage and be kind and we shall see you all next time. Bye!